If you're a sushi purist, like you have to have high quality sushi grade fish and absolutely no imitation crab, let me tell you right now, sushi bake is not that kind of sushi. But hey, you can still make delicious sushi bake and enjoy it. It's kind of like I should probably be having authentic Neapolitan style pizza, but I wouldn't complain if I had a slice of Little Caesars. So people have been posting about sushi bake and it's trending in the Philippines right now. Essentially what it is, is it's like a sushi casserole where you've got a layer of rice at the bottom and then usually imitation crab on top or maybe your choice of other seafood. So really there's a million different ways that you can make it, but I wanted to show you guys a simple, quick and kind of affordable option to make it at home. So feel free to experiment and make it your own. So before we start, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get alerted for more Filipino food and culture from this channel. And go ahead and check the description for some goodies. You did it? Good? Okay, cool. Now we can bake some sushi. First thing you gotta do is make rice. Now you're supposed to use sushi rice, but if you use whatever white rice you've got at home, it'll be fine. I'm using this medium grain rice and I'm cooking three cups of rice. I'm actually just gonna use two cups for this sushi bake. The other cup is gonna be for my own personal consumption. So do what you need to do to cook that rice. And if you don't know how to cook rice, whoa, <laughs> but it's okay. Just read the package on the rice bag and follow the directions. Once the rice is cooked, open it up to let the steam come out and just let the rice dry up a little. Set this aside while we work on the top of our sushi bake. For this recipe, I wanted salmon in my sushi bake. I went to the market and I found these scraps of salmon that they were selling for pretty affordable price. So this is about one and one half cup of raw salmon. And I'm just gonna slice this into little pieces so that I can scatter it throughout the top of the sushi bake. Another option I would have put would be like scallops, shrimp, or even this canned tuna if you absolutely need another seafood option. Note, if you're afraid of undercooked seafood, what you can actually do is you can just cook it on the side, like in a pan or something, and then you can add it on top of your sushi bake before it goes in the oven. So anyway, I'm gonna lightly season the salmon with two teaspoons of soy sauce and one teaspoon of sesame oil. Mix it all up, and then we're gonna put in some imitation crab. Lots of sushi bake recipes use imitation crab, which is basically ground up white fish with a bunch of flavorings added. It's a great option for an affordable sushi bake, especially if you're feeding a large party. Here I used one and one half cup of imitation crab. I just shredded this up with my fingers. It should shred pretty easily. Okay, the other thing that sushi bakes usually have is mayonnaise. I'm squeezing in one half cup of Japanese mayo, but you can also use normal mayo. Man, whenever I add mayo to a recipe, it feels like such a guilty pleasure. Mmm, so just mix this all up so that all your fillings get some of that mayo action. If you want a little bit of heat, which I highly recommend, add some of this pre-packaged wasabi. I put in one tablespoon plus one teaspoon, which will give you a good amount of heat to your sushi bake. Another option is using sriracha, but I actually don't like sriracha. Don't judge me. Okay, you know the drill. Mix this all up and make sure you break up the wasabi clumps to ensure that there's even distribution throughout your fishies. And then set it aside because at this point, your rice is probably done cooling down. In a separate bowl, dump in two cups of rice. To this rice, I'm adding one half cup of sushi vinegar. Sushi vinegar is actually rice vinegar with a few other seasonings added in there. Luckily, I have sushi vinegar, so I'm just gonna dump the sushi vinegar in the rice. But if you have rice vinegar, you can add the rice vinegar and then you can add some 
salt, and sugar to taste. So this may seem like a lot of sushi vinegar, but I highly recommend this ratio because the taste of the rice can stand out against the fish and mayo mixture in the final sushi bake. Alrighty, now grab a pan, and I'm using this seven by 10.5 inch pan, but use what you've got. Take your rice and then plop it on top, and then press down firmly to make sure that you've got a nice solid rice base. Now this is furikake, which is a Japanese seasoning that typically has dried seaweed, sesame seeds, maybe some dried fish, and a few other seasonings mixed in there. This stuff is delicious on top of rice, meats, and even popcorn. But we're gonna sprinkle about one half of a 55 gram jar on top of this rice. I like to have a lot of furikake to make it stand out. So once that's done, dump your fish mayo mixture on top. Evenly spread it out so you've got a flat top, which will allow this to cook evenly once we stick it in the oven. And speaking of oven, we gotta preheat. So preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius. Once it's preheated, stick your tray of sushi bake in there. Remember, there's raw salmon in here, so your cooking time depends on how fully cooked you want your salmon. I only baked mine for five minutes, but I would aim anywhere between five to eight minutes. I like to have a little bit of rawness in the middle of my salmon. But like I said, if you wanna play it safe, you can cook the salmon separately prior to adding it to the sushi bake. We're not done yet because I wanna add some more stuff on top. Okay, so I bought this masago, which are little eggs of the kepelin fish. I'm putting this on top of the sushi bake raw. Again, if you wanna play it safe, I'd put this on top of your sushi bake and bake it in the oven. But I like having the masago raw. Okay, then I'm gonna slice an avocado and then place it on top. I mean, to be honest, I can keep digging through the fridge and place more things in this sushi bake, but I think I'll stop here. Alrighty, and then it's just time to finish it off with the toppings that I got. So if you want, you could add more furikake on top, and I'm in love with furikake, so I will. And I also have a couple other types of furikake, so I'll sprinkle this on top. This one has wasabi in it. After that, it's time to spread a layer of masago on top. Adjust the amount of masago that you wanna put on top, depending on how salty you want it. I initially put half a pound of masago here, but later I ended up scraping some of it off because it got too salty. So I'd recommend starting with maybe a quarter pound of masago. And then just top it nicely with your avocado. Look at that green on orange, it's so pretty. So let this cool down and then you can slice it or you can just take a spoon and scoop out as much of the sushi bake as you want. Usually people eat it with dried seaweed, so I'm using this seasoned nori, so this already has some salt and seasonings on it, and then I just place my sushi bake right on top. And that's it. I mean, that was a lot of steps, but it's pretty simple to put together. And you can make your sushi bake as simple or as complicated as you want. That's the beauty of it. Ooh, you can also put the sushi bake inside inari. So inari are these deep fried tofu pockets that's been seasoned and it's like sweet, kind of sour and savory. It's so good. See if you can score some at your local Asian market. I think the most fun part about this sushi bake is that you can get super creative with it. I mean, you can put whatever you want on top. You can put that furikake on it. You don't have to. Maybe you can get fancier with the fish. So next time I think I'll add some fancier fish on top. What about you? Let me know. What are some ideas that you want to put on top of your sushi bake? Tell me in the comments. So after this, we actually stuck the sushi bake in the fridge because my boyfriend, Doug, he likes the sushi bake cold. And I tried it, it was actually really good. So it's up to you. You can have it fresh straight out of the oven or you can stick it in the fridge, let it cool down. 
How would you enjoy your sushi bake? Let me know. Have you even tried it cold? Well, that's it for the recipe. And again, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button, check the description for some goodies, and I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye!